parties involved and why does it look like i'm there why are you in this photo bro i was let there. us know in it seems like japan is going to need to make some major changes in their society for the future but the question is do you think they can and will they? Yeah, we're talking about three viral stories out of Japan today that sort of speak to Japan's need to change, but will they? Uh, the first one is about chaos breaking out in the Japanese parliament over a new like asylum refugee law. The second video is about gender equality. Japan wants to make sure that 30% of all high ranking executive positions at its corporations are women. And then number three, Andrew, we've actually got a viral incident on uh, China Airlines, which is a Taiwanese airline involving a Japanese Karen who's mad that nobody else can speak the Japanese language. Why don't you guys speak it right now? So you can shut up. Okay. You have an acid dinner with me under her! Miss, 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 okay. I will handle this twice. No, you're not handling anything. Two hundred, what's your name? Wow, all right, everybody. So please hit that like button. Check out other episodes of the Hot Pop Boys as we talk about this uh, all together. So please leave a comment down below as you watch the video. David, so for the first one, Parliament... What are they arguing about? What are the parties involved? And why does it look like I'm there? Why are you in this photo, bro? I was Let there. Let us know in the comment section parliament. below. Yeah, what were you doing in the Japanese parliament? Um, Long story short, Andrew, there's a left wing, a right wing party. The right wing party ended up winning. So there was the, a repeal of a law that basically said that asylum seekers could stay in Japan as long as they kept reapplying, even if they failed to hit the uh, requirement to stay in Japan. So basically, they got rid of this law now. So while they're considering your asylum application, they're going to go ahead and deport you now if they want. But of course, the more liberal-leaning politicians were like, dude, they could face persecution. They could be killed if we send them back to the country that they're seeking asylum from. This turned into a left-right you know, liberal conservative issue within the context of Japanese politics. And this caused, Andrew, a dog pile scuffle in mm. parliament in Japan, something that you wouldn't think that you would see. Yeah, I mean, I've seen it in the Taiwanese parliament a little bit. And I, obviously, I've seen videos in India as well. When oh. politics get heated, there is some physical fights. Would it work in America? I don't know because I'm pretty sure the Republicans would win because they would bring guns. Uh, but yeah, I, I guess it'd be interesting. Yeah, and in South Korea, I have actually seen a judo throw in parliament as well. So it's not unbelievable, but you would just think of out of the Asian countries, it'd probably be Japan would not be like yeah, this, right? I, I guess it's interesting that they don't, they're, like government in America is not violent, but then it can get violent in Asia, although the societies in Asia are less violent. It's interesting. It's interesting. a, it's yeah, a yeah, very, yeah. very nuanced, complex thing. Somebody yeah. said Japan has always been very homogenous. You're welcome to stay for a short period of time, but a permanent status is pretty much frowned upon if you're not Japanese. And someone said, yes, that's generally true. You can be a long-term resident, but you have to make a very, very, very serious effort to assimilate into the culture and contribute to the economy, which uh, doesn't seem like an unreasonable expectation. And then of course, Andrew, this led to other people being like, yeah, see, they're doing things right in Japan. You know, we're getting all this riffraff in America, draining us of our resources, not following rules, bringing our great land down, the land of the samurai, they want to uphold it. I guess my question for Americans, which, first of all, I do think if you immigrate to America, there is a healthy amount of assimilation that probably should happen and contributing, of course, paying taxes, having a job, whatever, whatever. But but I guess what does it mean to assimilate to American culture? Because American culture at this point is so diverse. Obviously, Japanese culture, it being more homogenous, I think we all kind of get an idea of what that right. is. Like uh, Japan has been 98 to 99 percent Japanese for like the the pretty much all of recorded history, right? right? America is constantly changing. That's why I do think it's difficult to make those comparisons, Andrew. But I do think the people who are making that comparison are probably realistically, they're probably white. Yeah, 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 yeah probably. Um, somebody says, if Japan's system is so good, then why is their population vanishing, huh? Why do they need immigration? Because every country at some point or another functionally needs immigration. Nativists, like it or not, it doesn't matter. It's simple math and simple societal building if you study history. Yeah, especially because most advanced societies around the world right now have a declining birth rate. Even Sweden, as well as that, you know, as great as that country is ran, everybody loves talking about Sweden and how... But well, Sweden to Japan would be the two ones, I guess, more pointed at. I would say by everybody, but per per perhaps particularly what? the right side. Yeah, right? yeah the, the Western right people love pointing out Japan and Sweden, but... 
all of them are experiencing a birth rate decline. I think Japan's is a little bit steeper than most places. So that's why this thought of like, oh, what changes are we going to make? Uh, yeah, we need to make some changes. Somebody said the truth is that Japan prioritizes its majority ethnicity and they would rather shrink in number, live a little poorer each family, but just remain Japanese. That's interesting, and uh, I don't doubt that some people think like this, but I don't want to say most people think like this. <laughs> Somebody said, well, look at this. If China is trying to be the next superpower to take over the U.S., how come refugees aren't flocking over there, huh? But they're all flocking to Japan and America still. <laughs> that, 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 that's a good one. That's a good day. <laughs> yeah. Hey, no, I mean, that's a good observation. Well, though. that's because... China, yeah, it doesn't seem uh, as outside appealing, of a few right? cities. It's not as appealing. Yeah, right. even I was. I will say this though: not refugees, but people who want to live like a more middle class to upper middle class life. I do see them fleeing to like Shanghai. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are people going to China, but obviously the rules are much stricter there, so it's a little bit less, more <laughs> this, constricting. This comment said: Refugees have done their homework. They have learned that if they go to China, they will have to work very long hours and receive very low wages in return. If they protest or say anything negative about Chinese culture, they will not be there for more than a week or less. They will be kicked out immediately. Yo, you know what's really interesting about a lot of like right wing ideas is like. I cannot tell whether they support the Japanese system, the Chinese system, or the American system. And right. I'm just like, which system is it? Because they're like, ah, oh, Japan's system's better. But I like the way sometimes China does things too. Well, America's the best. <laughs> like, what? It is confusing. What is, it's, it's a confusing. little confusing. I'm trying to understand what you're saying. Moving on to the second article, it is a proposal in the Japanese government that basically says 30% of executive positions should be women. Obviously, traditionally, Jap Japan is considered a very patriarchal society. Women weren't even really allowed to like work in the corporate workfares in any sort of like significant positions, I believe, until the, the 60s or the 70s. And still... Uh, pretty much, uh, like if we were to segment jobs into like low, middle, high, the high tier is very few women in Japan right. occupy high tier positions. Yeah, I mean, I think that this is generally how things a lot of go in a lot of like you know advanced societies, late stage capitalism. Right, you bring the women up, which is good. However, I will say I don't know if that plays against the birth rate as well. So that might be another reason because it is true that statistically speaking, the more career women there are, the less likely they're going to have a kid or the later they're having right. a kid. Well, they're just splitting their focus yeah, differently. It just, it, that's how things are. Somebody said when Shinzo Abe took office a few years ago, they had the same target and literally no progress was attained. Clearly, there is a gap between what Japanese proposals and the government say and the actual follow through, through and movement of society to actually change. Dude, I think to help the declining birth rate in a lot of places, you really have to make raising a child less burdensome and you have to be able to help help families out and help subsidize their rent so that they can live and feel like that they can afford to even have a kid because otherwise a kid is, it is very time consuming and very costly, but if you can help the cost, at least then people just got to deal with the time. Right, right, right. So this brings us back to the concept of immigration to Japan. Possibly it could uplift the birth rates and stuff like that, but that sort of leads us to this crazy roundabout incident that we have in the third place. Andrew, let's run the clip. Three, two, one. Long story short, Andrew, China Airlines is a Taiwanese airline. It's flying from Fukuoka, Japan to Taipei. The lady is asking for a water in Japanese. She's not being acknowledged knowledge because the stewardesses only speak Mandarin and English and she throws a fit. Mm. This is not a Japanese Kaiju. This is Japanese Karen. This is a Japanese woman acting badly and I don't think you really see this behavior from Japanese people a lot. Generally the stereotype is that Japanese people they will complain but they will do it like afterwards like at your face they right. do not want to show anything man. And I think that that's why it went so viral because this is just not stereotypically what you would think. Yo, I'm Japanese not gonna lie she do. was yelling like an American Karen. Yeah. So, like the way she sounded it was very I guess she embodied the American spirit. And this even comes, ties back to our issue of Japan changing, Andrew. A lot of people in the comment section were talking about, though, listen, Japan doesn't rule Taiwan anymore, guys. Because if you guys know, Japan actually used to colonize Taiwan for like a number, I believe, 50 years. And people in Taiwan, of all the surrounding Asian countries, they do probably have the highest proficiency in Japanese like in terms of just people naturally being exposed to it. So you're saying that this lady deep down might think or might think that 
Taiwan still should be part of Japan, so therefore she is demanding the stewardesses to speak Japanese. Yeah, it seems unlikely that she would do that on a Korea Airlines flight from Fukuoka to Seoul to demand that the Korean uh, stewardesses would speak Japanese. I don't know. These are just speculations from the comment section. Well, it and, looks like she might have had a little too much sake on the flight. Uh, and this sort of led us down even this other hole where some people were said, I'm Japanese, and I feel like the only other Asians that could become Japanese to uplift the Japanese population would be Taiwanese because they have already had so much influence from us over the years and the way their culture developed also as an island country. They could become part of Japan. So this is a ultra-nationalistic thing. So this ultra-prideful pri uh, Japanese nationalist is saying, oh, the only immigrants that we would want are from Taiwan. Yes, nobody I else. Yeah, I don't know if they <laughs> even want the immigrants from Taiwan. They just want Taiwan to become Japanese. Oh. By the way, this is not the majority of people in Japan. I'm just reading it. Right, this is comment. just a comment. That's an interesting perspective. Anyways, David, I guess your takeaways, you know, we don't live in Japan. We haven't lived there. We're not otakus. We're not weeaboos. We do, have, we do some have some relatives that grew up in Japan. Obviously, you know, if you just study Asia, Japan is a pretty significant player for good and for yeah. bad reasons in Asia, to be honest. Uh. So, um, yeah, basically, I think this major comment was just like, yo, listen, man, at the end of the day, you know, whether they issue things about changing Japanese society to like get more on with the trends or not changing society, it's just frozen. Yeah. It's not going to change either way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think Japan, one of the main things that they're going to deal with is I do think in a lot of older Japanese people, there is a deep down superiority complex still, at least of the people who are running Japan. Oh, right? for sure. Yeah. Or, or yeah. I yeah, mean, for sure. So, I, and maybe and, a portion and, of the And you can see why to play the devil's advocate. You can see why they would yeah, have Yeah, I get one. it. But their, but their problems, I guess, at least the way we view their problems, they keep on stacking on top of each other. So now it seems like looking from the outside in, we're like, yo, Japan, why don't you make some changes? Like, you know, make some shifts. And then they're like, uh, but uh, we are like trying to, f you know, figure it out and balance it. Like, well, do we want to stay superior? Do we mix in with people? Do we bring in a bunch of immigrants? How many immigrants are you going to have right, to bring right. in? How to assimilated bring up do the those immigrants rate? have to be, right? Like, think about it. We're talking about, hundreds of thousands to even make a dent in their population. Right. And, and everything that I read, because I did do some brief research for this on various platforms, most people's general opinion is they're just going to live and die by, yeah. by I, pretty much being Japanese. I, I think Japan is going to continue to shrink until they somehow can subsidize the families who are raising families and help them out, make it less burdensome, inspire young Japanese to want to start families. You do need to bring in some immigrants for sure. And then, uh, yeah, maybe in like, 10, 15 years, it starts to look better. But yeah, I think it's actually going to shrink for the next like 10 years. Maybe. But let us know what you guys think in the comments section below. Like I said, you know, we're not Japan experts. What do you think about everybody in the West always trying to draw these comparisons though? Being like, yeah, see, we need to do what they're doing right now in Japan, leaning into conservatism. Yeah. Say Japan's so great. Their, their system's so great. And then there's like, yeah, but Japan's <laughs> shrinking. Yeah, but their system's so great. I, I do think there's something to take away, not from Japanese, Japan's actual like policies and stuff, because I think the civilizations are just so different. You could argue America's only like 250 years old, not 3,500 years old or whatever Japan is. And um, I would say this, in 1990, Andrew, America was 84% white. In 2030, it'll be 55% white. Um, the biggest population growth will be Latino. Latino will 10X from 2% in 1990 to 22% over 40 years. So uh, America is like going to become like a partially Latin Latino country. Yeah, I mean, yeah, well, for sure. I mean, like it's already I don't know on. It's going to be a Latino country, but it's going to be like statistically the Latino population. Yeah, so that's so what I'm saying. Where I'm like, I could understand theoretically from like white people's perspective because you could still remember the '90s. Michael Jordan won his first championship in 1991. The internet didn't even come yeah. into vogue until like '96 on a like an everyday consumer basis. This shift is tremendous for Americans to accept. If J Japanese don't even want to accept like a 5% shift, Americans are accepting a 25, 30% shift. So I guess you could argue that they're handling it well as they can or that they're not handling it well. Oh, I don't know, guys. You let us know in the comments down below what you think. Uh, what is in store for Japan's future? And can they make the changes? When, when will they make the changes? And what will those changes be? And what can we take away from it? Because obviously, America's becoming more diverse. We got to figure out a way to all get along, have respect for each other, and not be divisive. So let us know what you guys think are possible solutions in the comment section below. Keep it civil. Until next time, we're the Hot Pot Boys. We out. Peace.